Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Tim Perkins. I'm founder at uh, Nudge. Um, I'm joined by Stephanie Fitzgerald. Um, in uh, we're now in Mental Health um, Awareness Week, so I'm joined by Stephanie Fitzgerald, chartered clinical psychologist, for this latest uh, Nudgecast. Welcome, Stephanie. Thanks, Tim. Um, great. So uh, I'll crack straight on. So as I mentioned, this week's Mental Health uh, Awareness Week. Uh, which is an annual event to raise awareness of mental health and inspire action to promote the message of good mental health. Um, I think it will be particularly welcomed this year in light of lockdown, which I imagine will bring mental health issues for many, Stephanie. Is that, is that pretty accurate? Yeah, absolutely. And I think so the, the Mental Health Foundation who, who organise and coordinate Mental Health Awareness Week have chosen a really good theme for this week, which is kindness. Uh, so originally, sort of pre-coronavirus, it was it was going to focus on uh, sleep, uh, which we all know is, is very key uh, to our mental health. But uh, they chose kindness given everything that's going on at the moment, and um, we know that kindness has a has an ability to to unify us um, and uh, activate some some really positive mental health responses. So yeah, great to be talking to you this week. Yeah, fantastic. Um, so I guess on top of that impact of, of isolation, um, what about the, the impact of financial uncertainty? So uh, 29th of April, I read that the CIPD had warned that furlough could prove to be a waiting room for unemployment. Uh, and, and this is no doubt weighing on people. Um, you know, millions of people furloughed now and uh, you know, unsure of their, their future. Um, and I think more generally, there's a cl very close relationship between the mind and money. Um, they're obviously exceptionally closely linked. So poor mental health means managing money is harder. But meanwhile, worrying about man money uh, negatively impacts your, your mental health. So, um, yeah, w when you're supporting people's uh, mental well-being at, 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 as part of your job at Rolls-Royce and, and, and beyond, um, do you see that strong link between money and the mind? Definitely. I think that financial well-being piece um, is so heavily linked with our overall well-being and how we feel day to day. If you're going to bed worrying about money, you're waking up worrying about money, that's going to impact on how you feel about your day. Um, and you see it start to diminish people's motivation. Um, you know, that I, th I think it's, it's a global um, problem that we're facing. We're seeing economies all over the place struggling. Um, and I think the biggest thing at the moment is the uncertainty. Um, so people are quite good and resilient in circumstances. They're, they're good at dealing with circumstances when there's, a, there's an absolute, when there's a situation to be dealt with, we're quite good at, as human beings at dealing with it. Yeah. At the moment, as you say, it's, am I in a waiting room? Does being on furlough mean anything? Uh, and actually for lots of companies, no, it, it doesn't mean anything. It just means you're on furlough. But what we start to do, and particularly if we're not working, we have a lot of time to think. Uh, right. So we start to worry, you know, what does this mean? Does this mean my job's not valued? Does this mean I'm not important? Does this mean I'm going to be made redundant? So definitely the uncertainty at the moment is, is really affecting people. Yeah, and, and I'm interested in how that might affect different people. Um, so as you're aware from previous sessions that we've done, Stephanie, we've got a huge resource of information uh, from close to half a million members of our, our Nudge community. Um, and you know, one of the trends that we've been tracking is around financial stress, which we do in a couple of ways. Number one, by explicitly asking people and that kind of self-certified response to whether uh, how financially stressed people are feeling at the moment. But also, secondly, tracking from a financial education perspective what people are learning about. So if people are learning about debt and government support, that points to more stress than if somebody's learning about, I don't know, savings and holidays, for example. And, and so generally, we've seen stress increase in the last few months. Um, but, but what's also quite is interesting is how we see that relating to demographics. So broadly, we see that um, financial stress is highest amongst younger people um, mm -hmm. and also amongst women rather than men. So mm. does anything there surprise you? 
Not really a, a surprise. I think um, what we know, and you know, it's a bit of a sweeping stereotype, but, but the research is sort of pointing us towards women are planners. Women tend to think about the future. They think a few steps ahead, um, where men are a bit more mindful. They're a bit more in this moment. This is what I'll deal with. Now, of course, you'll have people listening to this who say, hold on, I'm a man and I'm a planner. And you'll have women go, eh, I never think about the future. So it's a bit of a sweeping uh, generalization, but typically women are planning ahead and will um, if that if they can't make that plan or if there's some uncertainty in that plan that will generate some stress um, I think I knowing from, from the work that you do Tim and conversations we've had before definitely there are elements for younger people of just the sheer pressure um, particularly in the UK you know when will I buy a house how can I afford to pay my rent you know cost of living is quite high traveling to work cost of petrol etc that you know all these things add up um, and for young people who are seeing an unstable job market, they're seeing, you know, lots of things that can really generate a lot of stress and pressure at the moment. You can see why that younger age group that haven't already got their mortgage locked down, that haven't already got, you know, stable income, et cetera, can really be feeling the squeeze at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so thinking, I guess, proactively then, um, so you'll be very aware of, uh, you know, what employers can do to support mental, mental wellbeing. But, you know, particularly at the moment and particularly with that financial well-being underpinned to it you know what would your advice be to employers for how they can support people at this particularly tricky time it's a great question and for me i find that sometimes employers will say where's where's the line you know what can i do i don't want to interfere money's quite personal um but also i want to support and i think for me it's approaching everything with with empathy and without judgment so if someone comes to you and says they're really struggling with money um it's it's not helpful to jump into solution mode and i think as human beings we all geared to help so we just want to leap in and say oh i'll send you my spreadsheet or oh i use this app to manage my money and that could be really useful but actually first and foremost as an employer just listen to what they're telling you and then support and help and signpost so actually someone may just want to say i'm stressed at the moment or i'm struggling um or you may notice different behaviors from people you may notice different um you know changes in behavior so employers who um sort of tune into their employees managers who are quite present or team members that are quite present may notice changes in their team um, harder to spot at the moment whilst we're working remotely um, but again, if a colleague is is displaying behaviours that are unusual, um, I think it's good for employers to to check in um, and to to check in generally on their well-being, but also make financial well-being part of that conversation. Because if we normalise it and acknowledge these are uncertain times that we we're all um, affected by, that somehow gives you permission to put your hand up and say, yes, I'm affected too. Whereas if we ignore it as employers and we look away and we say, oh, no, that's personal, that's your money, that's your business. Somehow we're, we're blocking that conversation straight away and, and we can't help if we don't know. Yeah, I mean, we've made million brilliant grounds, haven't we, over the last few years with regards to kind of breaking that stigma and or, or addressing that stigma and taboo about mental health. Um, mm -hmm. You know, some you know, a, a, a real noticeable change there. Uh, I guess there's still a long way to go with regards to money. We're far too polite, aren't we, to talk about money here <laughs> in the UK? Um, so, yeah, I know, but I guess, you know, with the two being so intrinsically linked, yeah, particularly if money is the source of those mental well-being problems, we need to rem remove and we need to open the conversation about money as well. Definitely, definitely. Brilliant. Well, that was really helpful. Um, nice and crunchy. I appreciate this being uh, Mental Health Awareness Week. You've got lots on this week. So really appreciate <laughs> you taking the time out. And uh, yeah, look forward to speaking to you again. Thanks, Stephanie. Brilliant. Thanks, Tim. Take care.